Yves Henri Donath Mathieu Saint Laurent, or simply YSL. Hello everybody, it's your boy Sean here and we're back again with another video with JC So Finds Vlogs. We've checked the authenticity of your YSL bags. Now it's time we learn some cool facts that you may not know about YSL handbags and also the designer and the company itself. Fashion's fade, but style is eternal. If Chanel freed women through clothes that changed traditional womanhood forever, YSL gave them the empowerment they needed. And the man couldn't have said it any better himself. Born and raised in the then French occupied Oran, Algeria, somewhere around the region of North Africa, back in 1936, despite of all the ruckus and chaos, Yves Saint Laurent remembers his birth home as a cosmopolitan place made up of merchants from everywhere. To him, it was a place that sparkled in a multicolored patchwork that rested under the warmth of a North African star. Optimistic and certainly passionate about everything clothes related, he designed clothing for handmade puppets and held performances for his family, which he loved to do in his pastime. Although, he was bullied relentlessly at school for being effeminate. But everything turned a whole 360 for him and went further up when Saint Laurent won a drawing contest and the lurking eyes from a legendary designer caught his attention. And that man was Christian Dior. With such a huge potential at such a young age, Dior never hesitated in hiring YSL to train under his wing. Hence, YSL relocated to Paris and started his new life. This drawing in particular was what made him earn his rightful spot at Dior's empire. With that, he studied further at the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute or simply the Federation of Haute Couture. And it didn't stop there. During YSL's time with Dior in just a span of four years, YSL was already positioned as the chief stylist and creative director of the House of Dior upon the latter's unexpected passing. Unfortunately though, during the year 1960, his homeland called for him to fight for his country. To make matters worse, he received word that the press and clients received bad reviews for his collection with Dior the company, to which he inducted a leather jacket as haute couture. This caused directors of the house to eventually sack YSL, which led him to have a nervous breakdown since he was in a military hospital by the time the news arrived that he was fired because they just couldn't stand the negative reviews caused by his works. With this, he eventually took large doses of sedatives and psychoactive drugs, even electroshock therapy. <sighs> Poor YSL. Once Eves recovered and left the hospital, he immediately sued Dior, the company, and won with a breach of contract as his charges. But wait, before we get started with the next part, I would like to ask everyone to please like, share, and subscribe with JC's Home Finds Vlogs to be updated and posted on contents and our uploads. Fashion's fate, but style is eternal. Eve's creations mix elements of male and female fashion and included designs such as the first ever women's tuxedo suit, which was then called Less Smoking. Bianca Jagger, Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones' Pouse, wore this on their wedding day in 1971. What makes this legendary piece of art stand out is it became a symbol of the 1960s. It was an era when women wearing anything but dresses was deemed taboo. They constantly interpreted Less Smoking King was the first of a string of eternal designs including safari jackets, color block Mondrian dresses, and the chubby from Monsieur Saint Laurent 1971 Couture Liberation Quarante that helped define culture most especially made for women. By 1983, YSL was the first ever human being to be honored with an exhibition. That was by the Metropolitan Museum of Arts in New York City. Completely devoted in showing the world his creations, it would go on to be the first retrospective of a living couturier's work. The show entitled Yves Saint Laurent 25 Years of Design and was organized by respected people in the field of fashion like Diana Vreeland 
who displayed 243 of YSL's work in total dating way back in the year 1965 onwards to his contemporary works in the 70s. In the year 1999, Tom Ford became the creative director for the YSL Ready to Wear, and Yves Saint Laurent was still a creative master of the house until the year 2002, when he officially stepped down and retired. Many people lauded and respected him all the same as his master, Christian Dior. Yves died in his deathbed due to brain cancer in the year 2008. His ashes were scattered in Majoral Garden in Marrakech, Morocco a residence and botanical garden Eves had owned with Pierre Burge since the 1980s. The garden is still open to the public to this day. Fashions fade, styles are eternal. These are the words that everyone will remember Yves Saint Laurent by. As we may all know by now, greatness always comes with a price, and if you are willing to pay for that price and work hard for it, eventually you'll see success come knocking right down on your doors. Yves Saint Laurent wasn't all about colors and flowers, but he certainly showed everyone that through following your passion, perseverance, and friendships, you'll make the best out of things. And that's it for today with our video with the cool facts you may not know about YSL. Thank you so much once again for joining me on this one and I hope you learned something new today. Stay fabulous as always.